Hello, I'm Roy Hicks, Business Development Manager for Siemens. I'm here today to talk about time current curves and circuit breakers. Time current curves represent the performance characteristics of a breaker's ability to interrupt current. There are four functional characteristics that make up the curve. Long time, short time, instantaneous, and ground fault, which is typically represented by a separate curve. Molded case, insulated case, and power circuit breakers use electronic trip unit to measure the amount of current that's flowing through the breaker. When the current exceeds the trip unit settings, it will trip the breaker. Molded case breakers that use thermal mag trip units have fixed curves or may have an option to only adjust the instantaneous function if available. In this presentation, I'll only discuss the electronic trip unit characteristics as they pertain to the four functions and time current curves. Now at first glance, this graph with multiple breaker curves looks pretty awesome. In fact, at second glance, it looks pretty awesome. We'll try to help you zero in on how to understand the components of a circuit breaker curve and demonstrate a trip test on each one of the curve's components. Time current curves for circuit breakers are expressed in a logarithmic graph. These graphs are created using power study software or supplied by the circuit breaker manufacturer. The axis of the graph are time, shown in seconds, and current, representing the breaker and electrical circuit's ampere conditions. Time current curves have two primary characteristics, pickup and time delay. Pickup is the current level at which the time delay function begins counting. Pickup is illustrated as a vertical band, where the center of the band is the setting, and the band width is the tolerance of the setting due mainly to electronic component tolerances and ambient operating temperatures. The left edge of the band is the lowest pickup current level, and the right edge is the maximum current required to activate pickup. Any repeated conditions on a specific breaker will result in a much narrower band. Time delay relates to the intentional restraint time a breaker will not trip after a pickup is initiated. Time delay bandwidths contain a clearing time and a resettable time. The upper clearing time edge represents the maximum time required for a breaker trip, including the contacts opening and arcing time, whereas the lower edge of the delay band is the resettable time, the maximum time that an overload can persist without tripping the circuit breaker. For our demonstration, we're going to use the following equipment. Here I have two trip units. Each electronic trip unit is programmed to simulate a circuit breaker. This particular trip unit is a 3200 amp breaker, and this is a 1600 amp breaker. Both trip units are connected to this secondary current injection panel, which simulates load current simultaneously to both trip units. The load current can be adjusted between one to 150,000 amps to simulate continuous or fault current conditions. Both trip units have their breaker trip signal outputs connected to the panel, and either output signal will trip the load current instantly. The panel also has a timer which starts when the load current begins and stops when the signal is sent from the trip unit to the power panel. Since we're monitoring the timing of the trip signal without the circuit breaker's mechanical opening and arcing time, we'll add 15 milliseconds to the panel timing for a more accurate total breaker clearing time represented by the time curve. I've plotted a time curve for the 3200 amp breaker. Let's first take a look at the long time function. The upper end of the chart is where 10 to hundreds of seconds correspond with the curve at lower current levels. Here is where the long time function exists. And this vertical portion of the curve represents the long time pickup current setting. Long time pickup is the maximum current the breaker will carry before it will initiate a trip. The current value is determined by the settings programmed in the trip unit, and pickup may occur anywhere within this band. When long time pickup is activated, it simultaneously initiates a timer within the trip unit to begin counting how long the pickup is active. Should the current momentarily fall below pickup, the counter will reset and the previous pickup timing is ignored. The long time pickup is triggered solely by load current exceeding the long time setting, and this is called an overload. A long time overload can remain for some time without damaging the equipment, so the long time function has a setting called long time delay. The long time delay is a diagonal portion of the curve which represents the maximum total clearing time, including breaker opening and arcing time, whereas the lower edge of the curve is the resettable time. 
the maximum time that an overload can persist without tripping the circuit breaker. Also notice as the current increases on the scale beyond the long time pickup, the long time delay decreases without changing any settings. If more overload time is needed, simply adjusting the long time delay will add more resettable time. So this curve is showing us that a load current near the pickup setting will trip in approximately 50 seconds. Now let's see how that works using our demo. I'll set the 3200 amp unit to trip at its maximum long time setting of 3200 amps. And scroll down to the time delay and set it at the lowest setting of two seconds. To see what function activated the trip, I will use this query button. The query stores the last trip event in memory. So I'll press the clear button to remove any previous event from memory. Now over on the panel, I'll adjust the overload current to 3200 amps, ensuring that we're within the pickup tolerance band and start the test. The light you see here is the alarm LED, which indicates the breaker is in the pickup mode due to the overload. If it were flashing, that would indicate a temporary overload and the timer resets with each flash. So my light is solid, indicating my panel timer will run until the trip unit sends a signal to trip. There's a trip, and our timer shows that it occurred in 42 seconds. That's close enough. I'll press the query button to confirm that the unit did in fact stop on long time, which is confirmed by the long time LED illuminating. If we wanted to add more delay trip time, simply turning up the delay setting moves the delay band vertically on the graph and extends the resettable time. Short time function. If the load current exceeds 125% of the breaker's maximum amp trip rating, the short time function can be enabled to pick up. Like long time, the short time pickup is the maximum current the breaker will carry before it will initiate a trip. When pickup is activated, it too will initiate the internal timer to begin counting how long the short time pickup is active. Unlike long time delay, the short time delay has a definite time which is independent of the load current and illustrated by a horizontal segment of the curve. Load current levels within the short time pickup range are generally high and caused by abnormal or non-continuous current conditions. For these reasons, there are short time delay settings to prohibit the breaker from nuisance tripping. Short time delay settings are overlapping calibrated time bands. These bands normally have delay settings between 0.08 and 0.4 seconds. Any overload that occurs during either of the time delay bands will initiate a trip. The short time function also has a selectable I square T ramp that when selected in, the resultant time band increases a portion of the delay range to allow even more time delay, which is current dependent. Let's again look at the original 3200 amp time curve, and we'll see that the short time pickup is set to 10,000 amps and the short time delay is 80 milliseconds. The upper portion of the band is a total clearing time and the bottom of the band is the resettable time the maximum amount of time the overload can persist before the breaker will trip. With the short time delay set to 80 milliseconds, the test should stop in less than 140 milliseconds. Let's check it out. On the trip unit, I'll scroll down to the short time pickup and set it to 10,000 amps. And set the short time delay to 80 milliseconds. I want to use the query button on the trip unit to confirm what function tripped. Remember, the query holds the last trip event, so I'll press the clear button to remove any previous event from memory. Over at the panel, I'll set the load current to 12,000 amps, ensuring we're within the tolerance span, and press the start button. There's the trip and the timer stopped at 112 milliseconds. So why did the unit not trip in 80 milliseconds, you might ask? Well, 80 milliseconds is the resettable time, the bottom of the short time delay band, which also equals the short time delay setting of the trip unit. So the trip will occur below the top of the band, which is the total clearing time. 
if any upstream breaker's short time delay setting is below the total clearing time of the downstream breaker, that breaker may also trip, albeit milliseconds later, if both pickups were activated. What if a zone selective interlocking, or ZSI, option is added to the short time function? Well, ZSI uses the same short time pickup setting to activate its trip function, but it takes priority over any short time delay setting. There aren't any ZSI delay settings, so ZSI uses a fixed clearing time, which is less than the lowest short time delay setting, but slightly more than the instantaneous clearing time. This means that ZSI removes any intentional delays of a circuit breaker is connected with. Let's demonstrate this. I'm going to now use both the 3200 amp and 1600 amp trip units, which have ZSI options added to them. And they are connected to one another with the ZSI blocking connection. This connection allows a blocking signal to travel from the 1600 amp unit to the upstream 3200 amp unit, forcing the 3200 amp breaker to not trip on ZSI clearing time, but to use its program short time delay setting. I'm going to set up both trip units with the same short time pickup of 10,000 amps and the same minimum short time delay of 80 milliseconds. Now let's take a look at both breaker time curves plotted in one graph. As you can see, the curves are overlapping in the short time pickup and delay regions, so we would expect both trip units to trip. Let's test them and find out. I'll set the panel to provide 12,000 amps of overload current to both units. Press the start button, and there's the trip. The trip time was 75 milliseconds. That's less than the minimum short time delay setting of 80 milliseconds. But which trip unit interrupted the overload, or did they both trip? I'll press the query button on the 3200 amp, and none of the LEDs illuminated. Therefore, this unit didn't trip. Over on the 1600 amp, we see that this unit tripped on short time, but instead of the 112 millisecond trip time, ZSI bypassed the intentional short time delay setting of 80 milliseconds, resulting in a trip time of 75 milliseconds. That's about half of the trip time using the ZSI option. This outcome may be one of the reasons, if not the reason, why ZSI is listed as one of the code compliant options to NEC 240.87. Ground fault. What you just heard and seen tested about short time with or without ZSI is very similar when it comes to the ground fault function. Ground fault performs the same way, but the curve and the pickup current will not exceed 1200 amps. Instantaneous function. The final function to cover is instantaneous. The instantaneous function is pickup current dependent. It doesn't use a timer, nor does it provide any means to delay an overload trip upon pickup. When instantaneous pickup occurs, the breaker opens immediately, removing all current flow. Because instantaneous has no ability for an intentional delay, the upper limit of the band is the breaker's total clearing time, and the bottom of the band is non-resettable since it starts at zero seconds. The right edge of the curve represents the maximum interrupting current or withstand rating of the breaker. For a thermal mag breaker, the total clearing time is typically 16 milliseconds, or one cycle. And for ETU breakers, the total clearing time could be up to approximately 50 milliseconds, or three cycles. If the instantaneous pickup is set below the short time pickup, instantaneous will override the short time function. Also, should instantaneous be set higher than the available fault current or available arcing current, the breaker will not trip on instantaneous. Overloads in the higher instantaneous range may be more harmful to the equipment or personnel near the equipment. Let's see how instantaneous function operates. Both 1600 amp and 3200 amp trip units have a total clearing time of 50 milliseconds, as seen here in their time current curves. For the first demo, we'll set the instantaneous pickup of the 3200 amp unit to 25,000 amps, and the 1600 amp trip unit pickup at 15,000 amps. Clear the query on both trip units, and set the panel overload current to 20,000 amps. Now let's start the test. There's the trip, which cleared in 22 milliseconds.
This is far from 50 milliseconds as shown in the time curve's total clearing time because we must also account for the breaker's opening and arcing time, which all adds up to less than 50 milliseconds, the total clearing time. So let's see which unit tripped. Only the 1600 amp unit tripped because the 20,000 amps of load current was not high enough for the 25,000 amp setting of the 3200 amp unit to pick up. This time, let's increase the overload current to 26,000 amps, so now both units should pick up on instantaneous. I'll clear the last event from the query log and start the test. The timer stopped at 22 milliseconds, just like the last test. So neither the increase in current nor the lower setting of the instantaneous affected the instantaneous clearing time. Lowering instantaneous for coordination or arc reduction only ensures the breaker will pick up on instantaneous at the desired overload setting. Lowering the instantaneous setting does not decrease the total clearing time of a breaker. Now let's query each unit to see which one tripped. Both units tripped on instantaneous. Therefore, any two breakers in series that pick up on instantaneous overload will trip both breakers. Some time current curves may show an instantaneous override that moves the pickup to the maximum setting or the withstand rating of the breaker. Even if this portion of the curve is not illustrated in the graph, you must consider the breaker maximum instantaneous override rating as the pickup. So now we've talked about long time, short time, instantaneous and ground fault, and how electronic trip unit and time curve characteristics pertain to one another. So for more information about this topic and others, please refer to our website or call your local Siemens representative. Thank you. Siemens, ingenuity for life.